Well, hello. I am Brian Sambothen, uh, originally from Panama, then Columbus, Ohio, then Scottsdale, Arizona. So yeah, I've been going from tropical to winter to the desert. And today I'm going to be talking about Mac Ruby and why I think Mac Ruby in, in the Mac platform, it's the perfect combination for the beautiful language that we all love, Ruby. So in the past, I built a lot of Windows applications. Um, I built them with Visual Basic, with Delphi, uh, with Power Builder, every tool that, that was under uh, the sun during the client server era, I've used. Uh, some with some success, some others not so much. In uh, Windows applications, as you can see, I have a Brazilian favela as a background in here because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how beautiful your Windows app is, you're in a bad neighborhood. Uh, there's a, an inherent lack of desire for the platform to look and feel correct. Uh, many of you have probably flocked to the Mac uh, because of that. I don't see anybody with laptops, but oh, there's one. So there's some, uh, one data point. <laughs> uh, I've also built a lot of Java applications. Actually, I, um, most of my adult career has been on the Java platform. And uh, I, you know, I have to be grateful to the Java platform for everything that it did for me. Uh, but now I can bash it because I found things that are much better. So uh, Java platform, uh, Windows uh, desktop applications like you know, Swing or AWT base are well known to be pretty slow, uh, clunky. Uh, they're also pretty ugly. Uh, I didn't build that one, by the way. I'm just in, I'm letting it pass by because I don't want it to uglify my slides. So we, as Rubyists, want to have beautiful desktop applications, desktop applications that bring uh, the best that the uh, underlying operating system in the uh, platform, the hardware platform, can provide. Uh, we all seen applications like iTunes. And, uh, for example, in the Windows world, uh, Excel and Word seem to be the, the flagship um, applications that everybody tried to imitate. And they're still pretty damn ugly. Uh, not to say that they're actually usable, they're not. So something like iTunes uh, seems to be the um, the end goal for anybody building uh, a modern desktop application that mixes the abilities of the web and the abilities of the platform. Uh, if you try to build something like iTunes on a, on a browser, we know what the results are. Uh, it, typically an application that has uh, a very heavy JavaScript side to it. And uh, they seem not to last very long out there. So web applications, we like them to be beautiful but simple. Uh, desktop applications are where we're gonna have, you know, want them to look like the cockpit of an X F-16, uh, where we're doing, for example, things like uh, software development, uh, but we want them to be reliable, robust, uh, and also uh, beautiful. So uh, Apple has basically this dogma that uh, design is basically job number one, and I kind of stole that from Ford. Um, of course, in Ford's case, it might be a complete lie, because if you've ever driven a Ford, you know what typically happens. Uh, but at Apple, that design um, vision cascades down to the community. So uh, Mac developers, Cocoa developers, they like to build beautiful applications. And it's actually hard to find ugly Mac applications. Uh, mostly are experiments that will never see the, 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 day, uh, the light of day. So Apple, it's really good at mixing form, uh, function, and gluing all that together with beauty, which is where I want to uh, go. Now, that's not beautiful. Um, under the covers, there's something sinister and dark. Uh, and I don't mean to insult any small talk developers, but when you have C in small talk and uh, they go out on a date, they drink uh, way too much scotch, the next morning, you're going to end up with a pretty, well, nine months down the line, with a pretty ugly child. Uh, <laughs> that child, it's objective C. Now, in college, I had the choice between going with uh, C and C++ or Pascal. And actually, I went with Pascal because I could read it. 
I didn't have all the symbolic you know, gibberish that, uh, that you find in C-based languages. In given Ruby, it's a C-based language, but they actually did away with all the, most of the ugly things and ended up with a syntax that is pretty succinct, uh, easy to read, and in a language that's really enjoyable to, uh, to develop with. So it doesn't mean that just because this came from C that uh, it has to feel and, and, and look ugly. But Objective-C does feel and look ugly to me. Um, I, I actually, I used to uh, write a lot of code in Lisp and Scheme, and I find that you know, enjoyable. But when I look at Objective-C, I see this half-baked blend of the two worlds that just really confuses people. Um, the message passing, it just doesn't feel very natural. It feels like, like a bolted-on syntax on top of C. So um, as Rubyists, we would like to use Ruby to build beautiful Mac applications. Uh, here's an example of what you find on the web about people uh, that actually like to um, uh, bash Objective-C. And it is a very powerful platform, very powerful language, but it has a, a pretty heavy uh, ramp up curve to actually get to learn it. And the main problem that I have with it, uh, uh, besides the ugliness, it's the verbosity. Uh, this is an example of how to generate a signature with PHP, an MD5 uh, uh, signature, in how to generate it with Objective-C. And you can see that the, uh, the verbosity of the code, you know, it, it prevents you from really understanding what's going on. So the verdict is that Objective-C, it's way too verbose to do anything uh, in a rapid prototyping environment, anything where you want to see results, uh, anything where you want to do, for example, something TDD. Um, and with Ruby, now we can bring the frameworks of Ruby to do TDD in a Cocoa environment. So Mac Ruby, Mac Ruby, it's just another Ruby that happens to run on the Objective-C runtime. Uh, and the goal for Apple, actually Apple is the sponsor of Mac Ruby, so it's not a third party organization trying to jerry rig something into the platform. So there's a full support of Apple behind Mac Ruby. And it's a Ruby 1.9 implementation, which is also uh, very uh, good news for us that had to deal with 1.86, 1.87, 1.92. Uh, going back and forth, uh, uh, every time I do anything metaprogramming related, it breaks in one of those three. So I'm trying to stick with 192 for everything, and Mac Ruby started on the 19 branch. Um, so one of the goals uh, for Apple is to make Mac Ruby a first-class citizen of the platform. So Objective C uh, in, in Mac Ruby are living side by side as languages. The runtime is still Objective C. In Mac Ruby, it's seamless integrated uh, with that runtime. It is really fast, and it's something that, that not many Rubyists uh, kind of uh, boast about to their friends. It's like, yeah, I'm doing Ruby because it's really damn fast. No, you show them the code, and they're like, oh wow, I don't care if it's slow because it's beautiful. Well, with Mac Ruby, you have uh, this combination of speed and the Ruby uh, language under the covers. Uh, you have also seamless access to Objective C. And once you see uh, some of the Objective-C code, uh, you'll realize why we need Ruby <laughs> to, uh, to make it palatable. So how many of you have done any Objective-C programming? All right, well, that's a, that's a big contingency. Of, of those of you that have used Objective-C, how many do really enjoy Objective-C? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, I, I had my share of uh, ugly languages that I loved, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, and the, uh, the last element that uh, uh, um, MacRuby brings to the equation, it's DSLs. So in, in MacRuby, uh, we have a uh, DSL-ish library uh, called Hot Cocoa. And with Hot Cocoa, you can actually build uh, UI interfaces, uh, that's redundant, you can build UIs programmatically. And I will see, um, the non-programmatic way to build UIs and how to handle events and all that with Ruby. So, uh, like I mentioned, one of the, the, the nice things about uh, performance uh, in a Ruby VM, it's that on a desktop application, you don't have the ability to say, okay, we'll, we'll just add more servers and scale it. Uh, you don't have that luxury. So you need a fast runtime to actually have desktop applications that, that are you know, friendly and enjoyable to use. And I'm Matt Amonetti, it's uh, one of the uh, lead developers of the project. So let's uh, show you a couple of things with Mac Ruby uh, from IRB, and then we'll jump into Xcode to show, uh, to show some more uh, code examples. So 
So in Mac Ruby, every uh, Ruby command you're used to starts with Mac. So if I want to use IRB, I will type Mac IRB. And uh, one of the things I want to play with, which is typical in most of the uh, Mac Ruby um, demos, it's to basically use the scripting bridge, which is a library that allows you to uh, programmatically control some of the uh, Apple applications that have uh, scripting support. So let's start with the uh, number one victim for scripting, which is iTunes. And to get a hold of iTunes, the application, I use this uh, class called SB application, and I'm gonna retrieve the application by its uh, identifier, which is uh, COM Apple iTunes. Oh, you know, uh, it would be nice if I actually load the scripting bridge. Another thing that you will notice um, with Mac Ruby, it's that everything that you need to uh, deal with the Mac platform, it's pretty much built in. So uh, I can load frameworks by using the framework keyword in the name of the framework. So now I should be able to initialize iTunes again. Then why don't uh, I figure out what the uh, current track happens to be? And of course, it's just an object, so let's see if it's, does it have a name? Um, let me see, let's look at what methods we have available. And one of the things with, uh, with Mac Ruby, it's that all the classes uh, inherit from um, Objective-C classes. So you have a mix of uh, Ruby, uh, Ruby includes uh, modules that have been uh, included into the classes in parent uh, um, Objective-C classes. So by passing uh, through and through uh, to the methods um, command, I can actually see what methods uh, are specific to the Objective-C part of this object. And I'm also going to subtract the methods that come from object. So I don't see all the uh, root methods that happen to be in the uh, root of the class hierarchy. Uh, object. So, should probably do something prettier. So let's put this in a variable. Let's sort that in. Well, it's hard to type turning your head. And no, I normally don't use variable names like that. And if you want to avoid that return value, we do that. Okay. So let's see what we have. Um, so we have quite a bit of uh, methods. So let's take a look at the artist. And as you can see, the artist is nobody. So let's see if we actually have a song selected. Um, let's find something weird here. Hmm, of course, this is what happens when you try to do a live demo. Let's give it a try again. It, it should not need to be played, but that's strange. Let's try that again. If there's any uh, bad language, oh yeah, you're right, I'm sorry. And of course, I can control the playing or pausing of that. So <laughs> now let's let's do something else. Let's actually uh, talk to iPhoto. 
So here is uh, my iPhoto instance. And the, let me just grab the first photo on the last imported album. And now, um, unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to script the preview app, but I can always use the power of Ruby and bypass all that. <laughs> and my photo should be popping up somewhere. Hmm, for some reason, I don't see it. I love it. Uh, oh, fail with error, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah, I know, I know what I did. So uh, we have, let me see, first photo, properties, the path of the thumbnail. Do I need... Feel free to jump in and help me. Hey. <laughs> There's nothing more fun than watch a presenter sweat while his uh, demo is not working. Okay, so imagine that I am uh, the uh, scripting framework. And there's a picture. <laughs> All right, let's move on to more fun things. So like you can see, uh, as you can see, Mac uh, IRB feels just like IRB. Uh, Mac Ruby really feels just like Ruby. Except that you have the ability to control the Mac OS, use every framework and library that's under the covers, and you can also sell your apps on the App Store and make a lot of money. Be rich, drive a Ferrari, you know, typical dream of every programmer. Yes. Say you're controlling iTunes, would you have to load up iTunes? Would the user see that coming up? Uh, for most of the uh, uh, scripting automation ones, when I bring up the app, uh, when I uh, bring up an instance of the app, it seems to launch the app. So you see it, you know, bouncing on the on the on the bar and all that stuff. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure there's ways to do that silently or headless. Uh, I just haven't uh, gotten to that point yet. Oh, by the way, I am by no means an Objective C expert. I'm an expert on a lot of things that kind of look like Objective-C, and I've done a lot of desktop development, so this is, to me, a brand new world, too. So uh, I want you to get excited, as I'm excited right now, that I can actually finally build beautiful desktop applications with Ruby. So there's two ways to build applications uh, with Ruby, with Mac Ruby. Uh, one, it's programmatically, and I mentioned the uh, Hot Cocoa um, uh, framework. Or, or library that allows you to basically uh, position elements programmatically, uh, determine how those elements are going to uh, cover certain parts of the screen, how they're going to resize, uh, things of that sort. Um, in some environments, for example, when I used to do uh, swing development, that was my preferred way to actually uh, build UIs because the tools were really clunky and uh, just left you with a bad taste in your mouth after you put the code together. Uh, they also generated code. So the problem is that they were a one-shot tool. You generated the code, and then you had to actually go and manually change things to make it work correctly, just to you know, keep up with the limitations of the tool. So now you had something that was machine-generated, but yet you have to maintain. And uh, that always bothered me. Then um, in other environments, you have a binary representation of the UI of some sort, and then you hook up to it uh, from the code. So you really have a very clean separation of the view uh, from the models and controllers. Uh, with Objective-C and, uh, and Coco, you have sort of a slight combination of, of both. There's some uh, presentation-based wiring that goes into play in the actual view file, uh, but it's very minimal. It's basically the ability to have aliases to be able to talk to different parts of the UI from your controllers. Uh, there's also, and this is very hard to see, uh, always Lesson number one, always use light backgrounds for everything in a presentation. I just couldn't pass on these pictures. But you can see that there's a carpenter you know, doing things by hand. So that's a pro problematic uh, uh, point of view. And there's also interface builder, which you know, there's a bunch of machines back there where you can't see them. So Xcode 
it's the environment that all Mac developers use to build uh, Mac applications. And it has a UI builder, uh, which is actually pretty usable and uh, it's been around for a long time, so it has a lot, a lot of time to mature and become a very reliable uh, tool. Um, Xcode also uh, supports Ruby um, to an extent nowadays with Xcode 4. Uh, it's, no, it's no text mate. <laughs> Uh, the, the Ruby support is still kind of goofy. It's, it's, you know, I would say still quite experimental. Uh, for example, if you highlight a block of code and you do a um, um, Apple slash, you're thinking it's going to comment that block of code with Ruby comments. Well, you're going to get C comments in there. So things like that. There's little details here and there that, that need to be improved. So uh, Xcode. Uh, now has uh, on uh, Xcode uh, version number four has support for Mac Ruby applications built in. So it's no longer like a you know, wizardy for you to try to figure out how to get your Ruby application working in Xcode. So you can pick a, a Mac Ruby application and uh, it basically provides a skeleton for everything that you need to get started with desktop development with uh, Mac Ruby. So uh, this is a preview of what the interface builder looks like. And as you can see, it has a you know, graph paper-like type of a UI where you place components, uh, you have a main window for your application, and you will place your components and, and arrange them and lay them out uh, in a way that satisfy your application. Uh, there's also a, a lot of built-in uh, objects in uh, Interface Builder's uh, built, built, uh, uh, built library. So we have uh, all kinds of buttons and uh, controls, sliders, uh, also components that are used for automation with other applications. You can see that there's ways to control scanners in, in uh, uh, video devices and things of that sort. Uh, but we're going to play mostly with the visual controls today. So what I want to build uh, in front of you, which can go horribly wrong, uh, <laughs> it's a, a very simple uh, web browser. In uh, the web browser, of course, we're not going to build the, the uh, rendering uh, engine for a web browser, otherwise we would need a couple years of uh, time for the presentation. We're going to use WebKit, which is the built-in um, uh, connectivity to the WebKit uh, library. So there's a WebKit web view that allows to use the WebKit library to manipulate an embedded browser in an application. We're also going to have a home button, which we all know what it does, um, and a back and a forward button. And I'm going to show you how to build that application, uh, connect everything together, and use Ruby to handle all the important events under the covers. Now, there's something slightly goofy about this example, uh, which I did this example before without a single line of code, which you can do uh, in Interface Builder, uh, because there's ways to connect everything in, in, in ways that you can bypass all of the code. So in, for our example, I'm actually doing all that uh, wiring and handling of events in the Ruby code so you can see the mechanics of a Mac Ruby application. So what we're going to do is uh, use WebKit. We're going to lay out components on, on the main application window. We're going to deal with something called outlets uh, uh, and, of course, events and actions. I'm going to do some login, and we're going to build the application so we can have an executable that we can you know, give to our friends and say, hey, use my crappy browser instead of Safari or Firefox. <laughs> So uh, let's do some live coding. Mystery Science 3000, anybody? No? <laughs> Cavit Enter. So let's get started. And of course, I have a cheat sheet uh, to be able to do this correctly. And I'm going to turn on, on the mirroring so I don't have to be turning my head for this example. And. Of course, I have a completed version of this application um, on my computer, and it's also on GitHub, so you guys really can uh, go get it and play with it. But let's do a brand new one. So I'm going to, in Xcode, which, by the way, this is what Xcode looks like, um, I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to select the Mac Ruby application project. And let's call it um, Mac Ruby Browser Live. And you can see that um, 
if you're f familiar with Java, the namespace in, in, uh, in Objective-C and Cocoa and in the Mac platform is very similar to what, what they use in Java. Uh, you can see here that my company um, identifier, it's already uh, pre-filled. And uh, you can uh, determine which category you want to label your application to be under in the App Store. So the whole App Store stuff is now really baked in into the development environment. So you can have a very easy transition from uh, finished, uh, compiled, built product to the store. So I'm not going to pick any categories because this will never see the light of day. And uh, you can also create a document-based application where you would have uh, more of a built-in model under the covers for you to deal with certain aspects of the application. But in this case, we're going to ignore all that. Uh, there's also core data, which allows you to uh, basically use uh, the local file system as a data store of sorts. Uh, being a Ruby application, we could also use things like Active Record if we wanted to in, in a simple embedded database. So that's the beauty of this. Now we bring all of those gems from the Ruby world to actually help us in the Mac world. Uh, we can have, you know, truly complex models, uh, database-driven models, if we wanted to. Compatibility issues. Yes, they, they are. Uh, not all gems work on Mac Ruby. Uh, it, the way that I find which ones work, it's to basically try them. Uh, I, I believe there's a list somewhere. <laughs> uh, I just haven't gotten to it yet. Um, but in your experience, the majority seem to work. The majority seem to work. Um, Objective C also the, the runtime can also uh, deal with C plus plus and C. So in most cases things will work, but it's not guaranteed that it that they will. So after I created a new project, I need to pick a place for it to live. So I'm going to put it under my projects folder on my uh, documents. And as you can see, now I have my new project open in here. I have the definition of my project. I have the frameworks that the project is using uh, right here. So you can see that Coco framework and Mac Ruby uh, have been brought in. And I have something called an app delegate. And the app delegate, as you can see, it's not an Objective-C class, it's a Ruby class. And it has an attribute accessor for the window in the skeleton placeholder for a event handler called application did finish launching. Now, Objective C names are pretty verbose and long, and they actually follow camel case um, you know, syntax. So uh, you can uh, get cute and try to change that because then uh, the, the hookup of events in here, it's being done based on, on the name. Um, so you're going to see, one of the things that bothers me about Mac Ruby is that you see this combination of Objective-C methods uh, in Ruby methods. Now the JRuby guys did a very uh, in incredibly smart thing. It's that when you bring any Java methods into the equation, they get converted to Ruby syntax. So they get underscores and all, all, all lowercase. Um, why that wasn't done in Mac Ruby, I do not know. Uh, but it's one of the few things that syntactically bugs me a little bit. So you can see in here that that uh, method, uh, it's a Ruby method, and it just doesn't have anything inside of it. So um, there's also an RB main file. And this is the file that it's used to actually launch the application, um, uh, to, to launch the application as a Mac Ruby application. Uh, that RB main Ruby, it's also uh, invoked from this main, uh, the M uh, Ruby, I mean, uh, Objective-C class, or uh, sorry, C class. And you can see here that it's invoking RB main, which with whatever arguments are being passed. And that's going to invoke our um, RB main, that it's actually loading Coco and uh, loading all the files that you need, the main uh, file name, and uh, executing the application. So let's actually uh, start building the UI. And of course, I have, uh, for layouts, here's, uh, here's my cheat sheet. What, what, what goes where and how to align it. So let's get started by sizing things so I can actually do some work. Notice I'm going to click on this view so I can see the object library, which is uh, down, down here. And from there, I'm going to pick First, a NS button. All these NS classes are, you know, next step classes that are Objective-C, uh, you know, classes. 
So I have this uh, component or control called a square button. And I'm gonna drop my square button on the UI. Uh, and I should not do that because that button is floating on nowhere. You have to select the uh, window <laughs> that you're gonna work on. So as you can see, I don't have much uh, sc uh, screen real estate, but there's my main application window. So I'm going to try this again, grab my square button, and I'm gonna drop it somewhere on my application. Uh, one of the things that I wanna do to that button, it's actually uh, style it a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, it's uh, change the image on that button. So notice that I clicked on the attributes inspector up here, and I'm going to find the image attribute for that button right here. And now in uh, that image attribute, you can see that there's a drop down, and it'll give you a lot of different uh, choices, like you know what you use for a color panel for the computer. I could not find the one that I wanted for the home icon of, the, of a browser. Uh, but if you try things, they typically work. So I typed NS Home in there, and that actually happens to be the image. It won't refresh it um, at development time, but the, uh, the first time you run it, you'll see the button in there. So let's go ahead and run this. I notice that you can just, uh, I failed the build to, what did I do? Lovely. <laughs> okay. If I delete that, run it again. Uh huh. Yes. You think it's, oh, did I, did I leave it sitting out there? Oh, there it is. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's make sure that this builds with nothing in. Nope. Something, it's not liking me today. Great. All right, so this is our plan B. When things go straight to hell, uh, you bring the application that's completed and working. <laughs> and instead, <laughs> I'll do a walkthrough through the application. So here's the UI that I built for this, very simple. Uh, notice in here that that's my uh, home button. I have a, a text field and two round uh, texture buttons. Uh, in Interface Builder, I can change the names of the buttons directly on the interface. So there's a lot of things that you would not want to do in code. Uh, but for example, if you were using some kind of uh, bundling technique using a Ruby library, then you could still get to those buttons and change the language of the buttons from the Ruby code. So um, this kind of throws off my whole cheat sheet. So some of the things that I want to show you here um, First of all, so here's my application again. And uh, notice that when I click on the home button, I have a uh, action that's being sent from the go, uh, the go home uh, action. It's linked to this app delegate, which is the Ruby class that we've seen before. Now also, if you look at the uh, there's a reference in outlets, so I could map uh, different elements on my UI to code in the Ruby um, class. So if I open the app delegate, notice that, for example, I have something called URL bar that I added as an attribute accessor. Uh, URL bar, of course, like any other um, instance variable in Ruby, it's gonna be uh, accessible in the code as at percent uh, uh, and percent URL bar. 
Now, if you look at the connections for the URL bar, um, you can see that I, I linked the load page to the app delegate. So that basically what it's, uh, I'm doing in here um, with my outlets, it's, and I'll show you here a quick example. If I were to um, try to connect the referencing outlet to the app delegate, it tells me what do you want to connect it to. So in this case, I'm going to say that's the URL bar. And that's how you create connections between the UI and your Ruby code. Now, the, to be able to load content, I created a couple methods. Uh, one, it's called go home. And uh, the go home method, uh, it's going to use the uh, built in uh, Objective C logger, which is the class NS log. Uh, and you, you can pass a Ruby string to that. Uh, and then I'm grabbing that URL bar and I'm setting the string value of the URL bar to a URL, uh, just google.com. And then I'm calling a method that I wrote in here called load page, uh, passing the sender that was passed to that method. Now, in load page, what I'm doing, it's accessing the main frame of the web view. Now, you might ask yourself, what is the web view? Um, if you look back at the UI, there is a component called web view, which I took from the WebKit library, which is the only component that's available there, and that is a web view. So basically, a full-blown browser uh, in a Objective-C control that can be placed on any application. Now, inside of my web view, um, I, I connected my uh, web view to the app delegate. Uh, so the at percent web view in my code, it's pointing to that web view. In the code, then in the load method, I'm getting to the main frame of the web view and I'm loading a request. And of course, to as a Ruby is to find out how you can do this, you would have to actually look at the Objective-C documentation. Uh, it's all online, uh, and there's a lot of how-to uh, articles in there, so there's a lot of searching involved with learning Objective-C if you don't have a, a guide of sorts, or some kind of book that you're following. Uh, but I seem to be able to find most of the things that I need uh, just by, by searching the, uh, the library. So in here, I'm using this NS... URL request, I'm requesting a, a URL with the uh, specific string that actually happens to be in the URL bar. So um, I modify the application that finished launching to actually go to the home page immediately. So the application launches, I go to the home page. Um, then I connected the events go back and go forward to the go back and go forward uh, methods in the web view, uh, and I attach those to the buttons. If we go back to the, uh, the UI, and I pick the back button, for example, you can see that the uh, action go back, it's being sent to the app delegate, and the back button, uh, it's referenced in the app delegate. Now, let me show you a couple more things in here, and then we'll launch this thing. Um, so I show you uh, how we go home, how we load a page. Um, let's actually view those in a running application. And hopefully this should work, because it worked just five minutes ago. And somehow we'll realize there was something very stupid uh, that failed before. So here's my, my little browser. Uh, very little work in terms of basically laying things out. Um, I probably lost, no, the Wi-Fi seems to be working. No, it's not. Hmm. So Google's new page, it's so simple that it doesn't have any text on it. It's beautifully simple. <laughs> Well, it, that, I, I deserve that for trusting a, a Wi-Fi connection. So, <laughs> But uh, trust me, it works. And you can get the code from GitHub and, and uh, check it out. 
Uh, some of the things that I did in here, um, I made the URL bar uh, text field the driver for the whole application. So whatever URL goes in there gets reflected on the web view. Um, if we go back to the code, there's also a couple things uh, that I had to do to be able to keep that uh, text field as the driver for the application. So one of the things that I had to do is uh, figure out a way to uh, change the address of the page that was loaded. So if somebody was navigating on the browser, I need to capture those events and then change the URL that's being shown. And I did that with this method. Um, so notice in here that the method starts with web view. Uh, then there's a parameter called web view, and I did start provisional load for frame, a column in the word frame. So it looks very non-Ruby-ish, very strange. It, it, it's, it's valid Ruby, but it doesn't look very Rubyist. So uh, inside of that method, uh, I'm, I'm putting a log message, and I'm checking that the frame is actually the main frame of the browser. And if that happens to be the case, I'm setting the string value of the URL bar to the absolute uh, URL of the uh, frame that's being loaded. Now, you might ask, how did you figure out how to write that method? Well, the first step was to actually uh, Google for how to refresh uh, or how to get the title or the, the URL of the page being loaded. And of course, I got a, a snippet of Objective-C. And, and I'll show you um, what that snippet looks like. Hey, never, words never run through, huh? <laughs> so here's the Objective-C method that I found. Uh, you can see that there's a dash, uh, return value, it's, uh, it's void. Uh, there's prefix with the word web view in a column. So that's what you see in the name of the method, web view. Uh, the web view parameter, it's uh, basically the sender that we see up there. And the uh, did receive title uh, has two parameters. One, it's uh, title, and then there's also a for frame uh, frame parameter. So the syntactic sugar that they use in Mac Ruby to be able to bring that type of method signature into Ruby was to use columns. So you can see that I have the did receive title. Of course, I don't need types because we have an un, un, you know, a, a untyped environment. And I have uh, my title and my frame. Uh, also, you can see some of the strangeness of Objective-C when you see all the brackets on the inside of the if. So all the message passing, it's done with nested brackets. So in this case, they're sending the window message to the sender, and then they're sending the set title, title message to the result of that. So it's kind of like dot notation, but with brackets, which I don't know what they had against dot notation since it was a C-based language, but that's a topic for another day. Now, so what we did uh, was to uh, interact with WebKit uh, sorry, one of the things that I forgot to mention, too, is that uh, if I had run the applications as it was before, it also wouldn't work because I needed to actually add the uh, library. And if you look at the definition of the application, I had to add the WebKit framework in there. So from here, you can uh, have access to basically all the built-in frameworks of the uh, uh, Mac platform. So there's a lot of stuff in here that you can start playing with, and that's sort of how I've been discovering Mac Ruby by actually loading a library and see what methods are in there and play playing with with the code. Um, I got the Ruby part down, so now it's basically a, the process of discovery of Mac Ruby. Uh, that's the uh, URL on GitHub where the code uh, lives. And I'm going to keep on adding more and more. Everything that I experiment with, I, I, I throw up in GitHub. There's hundreds of Ruby projects in there, hundreds of uh, Java projects in there. Just ignore those. Uh, and, and soon to be a lot of Mac Ruby projects in there. Uh, we also use a native logger. Uh, and uh, I can show you that there's an executable. You get it. There's, there's, a, there's an app that you can basically now drop into your applications folder and anybody can use it. Uh, so basically you have a native Cocoa application that is being controlled by the coolest language that we know uh, living on your Mac. And I can already see an explosion of Ruby-based development tools probably built with Objective-C in, in, in Ruby Cocoa in uh, Mac Ruby, uh, and uh, it's, it's, it's an interesting time to actually be on the Mac platform. Uh, there's a few books out there. Um, 
I got the early, early release of those two books, uh, Matt Ruby in Action and uh, Matt Imonetti's uh, Matt Ruby, The Definitive Guide. Uh, this one so far, it's, it's really good and it's all available online for free on the O'Reilly uh, site. Uh, thank you very much. Any questions? Yes. Ah, sorry. Next question. <laughs> no, uh, the Mac Ruby actually uses the garbage collector. So the iPhone and iPad applications are not allowed to basically touch that part of the infrastructure of, of the system. So uh, not yet. But I hear rumors that things are changing for the better. So I'm, I'm tempted to say that in the next six months we might see some announcements. Uh, regarding um, Mac Ruby on the iPad and iPhone. Yes. Uh, this is what I've been using. <laughs> um, well, all the, the Ruby class, I mean, you can build your own R dot from, from the Mac Ruby source. I, I don't know that somebody has uh, posted online somewhere so everybody can get it for free. Uh, but maybe, maybe that's something I'll do. I have a few servers laying around. Uh, but the, um, the Ruby, it's still just Ruby. It's the Objective-C part that you're going to have to basically look up and then do the translations like I did from some of the, the Objective-C examples to the, to, the, uh, to the Ruby examples. And that took me a little bit of time, figuring out how that, you know, the dynamic of converting things. I don't know if somebody can actually write a, a parsing tool that can actually do the conversion for the method signatures. That would be probably a very nice thing to, uh, to have. Um, any other questions? Yes. Same here. I have the same problems with understanding Objective-C syntax method, the way they think about passing, uh, passing messages to objects. Nothing that it's a, a clearinghouse, yeah. Yeah, there, there's not a clearinghouse of basically all information for Mac Ruby stuff. The Mac Ruby website has a lot of links to, to different things, uh, but you can see a lot of DSLs appearing around the complexities and ugliness of Objective C. Like, for example, Hot Cocoa, it's a library that basically wraps building UIs programmatically with Mac Ruby. So it, it's, it looks completely uh, like Ruby, there's nothing weird in it. And, the more, I imagine, uh, the, 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 the progress of the platform is going to be that people just build directly by touching the Objective-C classes, but they start writing basically libraries that encapsulate some common behaviors. And eventually you're going to have DSLs wrapped around all the Objective-C ugliness uh, so we can be completely shielded from it. You still have to go and understand it because, you know, it, it's, it, you're, you're really talking, you know, very close to the metal development in here. Uh, and uh, UI development is that way. You really need to understand, you know, what the control that's under the covers, uh, how it behaves, how it works. Uh, there's also going to be uh, probably memory uh, allocation, the allocation issues that you might have to deal with in, in complex applications. So things like that, you will start seeing um, libraries or DSLs wrapped around complexity, uh, little areas like that, just like Rails did with web development. So, uh, one more question. Well, uh, I actually, <laughs> the first desktop app that I bought through the App Store was Xcode 4, which actually then I discovered it was free, <laughs> but somehow you paid five bucks to buy it from the App Store, so you can get updates and stuff like that. So I'm going to write a letter to Steve to get my five dollars back. Uh, but uh, other than that, it seems to be uh, an explosion of applications. They, it, it's growing fast. It's not as, as big as the uh, iPhone Store or any of those uh, iTunes Store, um, but it's, it's growing. It's growing, and, and I think they have a very uh, high level of standards to, to let applications in. So you're going to be, again, in a good neighborhood. Thank you.